The JWS teams have released the first results about everyone's favourite exoplanet system, TRAPPIST-1. It's a nearby system of rocky exoplanets that might be one of the best chances for a habitable world just like us. And now we finally have results about one of those planets. TRAPPIST-1 is the name of a small star about 40 light years from Earth, and in 2017 astronomers announced the discovery of seven rocky planets orbiting that star. These planets are named TRAPPIST-1b, that's the closest one to the star, all the way out to TRAPPIST-1h, that's the furthest one from the star. Don't be fooled though, even the most distant is super close to that star, and in fact the orbits of all seven of them would easily fit inside the orbit of Mercury. The reason these planets are still interesting, and probably aren't just flaming balls of death, is that the star they orbit is a lot smaller and a lot cooler than our sun. So in fact, several of these planets receive similar amounts of heat, energy and radiation than the Earth does from our sun. The new information we have is all to do with TRAPPIST-1b, the closest planet to the star. Despite the fact that this planet is over a thousand times fainter than the Sun, the incredible resolution of JWST's mid-infrared instrument has allowed us to measure the surface temperature of the planet for the first time. Based on the infrared emission from the planet, measured by the mid-infrared instrument MIRI, we now know the planet's day side has a temperature of around 230 degrees Celsius. That's 446 degrees Fahrenheit or 500 Kelvin. In turn, this tells us that it's incredibly unlikely that the planet has any significant atmosphere at all, and is likely all just rock. Previously, telescopes like Hubble and Spitzer had found no evidence of sort of a big puffy atmosphere, but a denser one closer to the planet was still possible until now. Before JWST, no telescope had the sensitivity to measure such dim infrared light, but now we can see no evidence for any atmosphere at all. Personally, I think it's really difficult to properly understand how impressive this measurement is. At least, I really struggle. Sure, it might suggest that TRAPPIST-1b isn't a good candidate for life, but it's also outside the habitable zone of the star, so we pretty much knew that already. But this new measurement does tell us that JWST is poised to see some very impressive and exciting things when we look at data from the other planets, a few of which are inside the habitable zone, so are much better candidates anyway. This is the first detection of any form of light emitted by an exoplanet that's as small and cool as the rocky planets in our own solar system. Life needs an atmosphere, and now we know we have the capabilities to probe for these atmospheres in the TRAPPIST-1 system. And of course, we can do it for any similar system as well. To find life, first we've got to find an atmosphere. TRAPPIST-1b, the planet in question here, orbits its star at less than one hundredth of the distance that Earth orbits the Sun and it receives about four times the energy that Earth does. So, too hot and radiation-y for life, but still a window into the conditions of the TRAPPIST system. There are many, many, up to ten times more stars like TRAPPIST-1 in the Milky Way than stars like the Sun, and these cooler, smaller stars are twice as likely to host rocky planets. So knowing that we can study these in so much detail is incredibly exciting. The downside of these stars is that they're usually way more active and bright, and often give off flares and x-rays or gamma ray bursts that can completely wipe out atmospheres from these planets. That could be exactly what's happened here, but we can't say that for sure just yet. I guess the question now becomes, how did we even measure the temperature or light from a planet that's so small and so close to its star? Well, to start with, we should note that this planet is, and probably all of the TRAPPIST planets are, tidally locked. This means that the same side is always facing the star, and it's always daytime on that side, and the other side is always nighttime. This is like how we always see the same side of the moon from here on Earth. The moon is tidally locked as well. The day side of the planet, therefore, is really hot, because it's permanently being blasted with heat from the star. However, if TRAPPIST-1 had an atmosphere, then this day side would actually be cooler than it was if it's just exposed rock. This is because the atmosphere would swirl up and circulate heat across the planet, doing a little bit to equilibrate the temperature. So if there's an atmosphere, the day side would be cooler than if there's no atmosphere. Got it. Knowing this, we take our best theories and models. We input the size of the planet and the star, the distances involved and the heat coming from that star, and we make predictions for both cases, with and without an atmosphere. Then we measure the actual temperature and we see which model is the best fit. 
The way they did the actual measuring was using a technique called secondary eclipse photometry. And they used the JWST instrument MIRI to measure the brightness of the whole system over time, including when the planet moved behind the star. That's what a secondary eclipse is. A normal primary eclipse would be the planet moving between the star and the telescope. So if the camera and you are looking at a star, let's say represented by this ball, a primary eclipse would be when this uh, planet moves between you and the star. And a secondary eclipse would be when the planet moves behind the star. Despite TRAPPIST-1b not giving off any light of its own, it does reflect starlight. So when it's out here, we receive all the starlight, plus a little bit reflected by the planet. And when the planet goes behind, we no longer receive any reflected light. So the whole system is a little dimmer during this secondary eclipse. This curve, called a light curve, shows us the amount of light received from the system over time. And we can see a clear dip when the eclipse happens. So by subtracting the light we receive from just the star on its own, from the brightness of the two combined, you can calculate how much infrared light is given off by the planet, and hence deduce its temperature. This in itself is an incredible achievement. Since the star is a thousand times brighter than the planet, the change in brightness during the eclipse is less than 0.1%. Plus, there's the added complication of other planets orbiting the star too. So it's already a super impressive measurement to make. Over the course of observing five secondary eclipses of TRAPPIST-1b, the data let the team arrive at the 230 degrees Celsius that I mentioned earlier. And hence, the most likely conclusion is no atmosphere in this case. You can see here a comparison of the models for TRAPPIST-1b with and without an atmosphere. And the real data is incredibly consistent with the no atmosphere model. And hence, that's what we conclude. It's likely bare rock and no atmosphere to circulate the heat. And there were also no signs of any carbon dioxide, which apparently would also have been clear from these measurements. You can also see the temperatures of Earth and Mercury here too, just for comparison. You can see it's a lot hotter than Earth is. Follow up additional secondary eclipse observations are currently in progress, and the team also hopes to observe some primary eclipses too, to see a full light curve of the orbits. No atmosphere here doesn't rule out an atmosphere or habitable conditions on the other TRAPPIST-1 planets. And this one was never the most likely anyway to have any of those. We'll just have to wait to hear more about the system and the other better candidates for atmospheres, liquid water, and habitability. To be honest, it's probably a good sign that we only have this one null result at the moment. Since the other planets have been observed already too, if anything exciting was seen, then I bet the teams would want to check it a lot and be very thorough. And that might take longer. So I view all of this as good news. That's just my speculation though. Nothing official has been said about anything other than this result. So don't hold me to it if all of the planets are barren and sad. I'm just guessing here. Whenever we do hear something though, I'll cover it right here on the channel. So be sure to subscribe for all of the future excitement and leave a comment down below to let me know your thoughts on this first announcement from the land of Trappist. Thanks for watching and I hope you had fun. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.